I talk for the press. Well, my people, me here for drop the real news, you know, news reviews, everything in a one right this or right there, my people. So all I want enough to do is like up the video, share out the video, subscribe to my channel, my people. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. Let's get right into it. A corrupt government cannot liberate the people. If the head of the stream is corrupt, the entire river will be also. A blessed, a blessed good day to you, my wisdom warriors. Wagwan, wagwan. I'm back again with another video. Well, may I bring on a straight in at the Western Jamaica because right now police on high alert after fatal shooting of one of St. James' top gangsters and two others in Hanover. Uh -huh. Police in Western Jamaica are now on high alert following the fatal shooting of Clive Greedy Lawson. On a year fame name, Greedy, the alleged interim leader of the notorious Mount Salem St. James based Caton Defense Force, which they call the KDF, top junglist gang. My wisdom warriors right now, they must say Greedy cut down, obviously, because, you know, fatal shooting and all right this day well they, they must say basically he is the top junglist gangster in a st james based on the kate and defense force so them say we don't know my wisdom warriors right now we just go by what them say we remember you know and everything then come out and talk and really so it go but we are go with the flow you understand because that's all we can do right now Mother grieves after daughter succumbs to chop wounds. And I remember yesterday when I talk about the young lady that has been C H O P U P. All right. Well, the mother right now, she's grieving. I am lonely, afraid, and weak. This is the mother, I know. The mother is saying, I am lonely, afraid, weak. I don't know how I am going to hold up. Everything is just bad, said Leela Richards, whose youngest daughter, 29-year-old Sidonie Martin, died from chop wounds on Tuesday. The wounds were allegedly inflicted during an altercation with a man three days earlier in Choro, Westmoreland. Yesterday, I talked about it, my wisdom warriors. I'm so going to say what I want. I'm telling you, crime is not reducing, you know, and it is a sad situation. Me really feel it for the mother because now she has said she's lonely, she's afraid, she's weak. It it is just too much. It is just too much. You understand? Two person have a disagreement and then choose for and the, the other the other person, the man choose to use the machete and do this to the, the to the young lady. Come on, man. Come on. I saw no angry. Jesus mercy. Mighty God of Daniel, I just want to say rest in peace and my condolence goes out to the mother and family. Breaking news, breaking news. New York City Mayor Eric Adams just announced that they are ending their debit card food vouchers for illegal immigrants. So anybody who is illegal immigrants and who always get vouchers, I don't know how it really go in America, but I just uh, make everybody know what is going on. This is what the mayor for New York City is saying. But we them always some warriors. Them always say they always say New York have the most illegal immigrants. And see they now? See what them go do now? Right it all. Trump serious you know? Trump now play to backside. Mm -mm -mm -mm. But anyway, me just make you know what is going on. A husband is facing an increasingly dire situation after a medical supplier refused to accept a commitment letter from the health ministry to pay for the apparatus needed for his wife's critical surgery. The supplier cited unpaid debts from the Ministry of Health and Wellness as the reason for refusal. St. Catherine teacher Christopher Kelly said his wife requires hip replacement surgery following a car accident two years ago. My wisdom warriors, I can't really blame the people, let me know. Me tell you no, me tell you no before you know. Me don't know remember. Me tell you no say the health ministry owe a lot of bill, especially when it come all to medication. Who remember when me talk about it? Me talk about it good while now. Me say they owe a lot of bills, and anytime them borrow nothing, anytime them borrow nothing, or then or then credit anything, they no like for pay for it. So me hear, Lord God, there's allegations out there. So really and truly. You can't really, you understand? Can't really blame the people, them. But Christopher Tufton, you come out other day and say, money are not the problem. So how are you not all suppliers? Hmm? This makes sense? 
How comes one of our suppliers over 400 million? Me rat it all. No, sir, my wisdom warriors from I ban. Christopher Tufton. Are you me a call out, pan? Hmm? Are you me a talk to, brother? How comes you owe 400 million to suppliers? How? But me tell you, you know, my wisdom warriors. Who remember when me did a talk about it? Who remember when the woman did come out and a talk say, no for them MP, they have funeral home. Yeah? Who remember my wisdom warriors? And I was talking about it. Because people come out and people say, they now pay the suppliers, their money, their credit things, and they now pay up. So this is why they not even get medication. Lord God, me tap in eyes here. I saw me here, my wisdom warriors. This is not right. And then Christopher Tufton come out and a boss. How money are not the problem. So how money are not the problem, but you know, over 400 million. Of course, you don't have money problem. You don't have money problem. You don't take your money and do what you want to do for your own business. But you don't remember about the Jamaican people. So who will you blame for this now? Who will you blame for this? Labor right, you don't come over here, sir. So. Because you love over here. Who will you blame? Who are we supposed to blame for this? 400 million owed to suppliers. This is why this lady cannot get her surgery done. Jesus. My wisdom warriors. You know what? Mm -mm. It is sad. It is sad. Gunmen reportedly rob a homeowner of an undisclosed sum of money and a motor vehicle in Buff Bay, West Portland, earlier today, according to preliminary reports. Around 6.45 p.m., three men armed with handguns broke into a home under the cover of darkness. Inside the house, they confronted a woman who was home with her six-year-old child. Me I tell you no, over Portland no normal at all. Hmm? Over Portland, Portland homeowner rob at gunpoint. Chaja. My wisdom warriors, I have a video clip with Anne Marie Vals and Ivan Rose. Anne Marie Vals, she want A T T A C K I N G Ivan Rose. Remember, me played in the last video, but me know so some people never managed to see it. So, if you're new to the channel, welcome, guys. So, take in this. <laughs> So my wisdom warriors, on a sister Anne-Marie Vaz, Mrs. Jezebel, left all the way from over Portland, come over St. Thomas, and call interfere with Ivan Rose because them grudgeful and them bad mind. Mm -hmm. And so because Ivan Rose and the PNP are beat them bad and then can't hold up, the only thing left for them to do is war the PNP. That's all. So, I just want to say what I want. Anyway, you want to tell me what you think and put an honest opinion in the comment section. Take in this. A Jamaican man has been detained in connection with the investigation into the murder of Antigua and Barbuda independent legislator Asat Michael this week. The young male suspect was reportedly detained while attempting to flee the country. When I hear what I go on, my wisdom warriors, I think me did talk about this, you know. I think me did talk about it. So, basically, basically, my wisdom warriors, the murder of Antigua and Barbuda independent legislator, Asat Michael. Asat Michael in him. He's an independent legislator. However, it is alleged that it's a Jamaican man that do it. And he has been detained in Antigua in connection with the murder of the politician. My wisdom warrior. So, then catch him when he was attempting to flee the country. I must Jamaica ended up try to come back to Lord Jesus. But if this you really do this, you forget life. Mm -hmm. You forget life. Can't do things like that, brother. Can't do things like that. I just want to say rest in peace and my condolence goes out to the family. 
There is an urgent appeal for blood donation for a police sergeant who was shot and injured at his home in Portmore, St. Catherine, Thursday night. It is reported that sometimes after 9 p.m., the sergeant was called out of his home when explosions sounding like gunshots were heard. Uno you them something, yeah? My box cover, the police shot at St. Catherine home. Urgent appeal for blood donation. My people, mighty God of Daniel. The man was called out of his home, you know, when an explosion sound like gunshots were heard. Want to hear them something, yeah? No, him need blood. So, I just make you know what I go on from what I go on. It has come to my attention that oral submissions will resume today, my wisdom warriors. Yeah? in the Supreme Court in downtown Kingston as the legal dispute between Prime Minister Andrew Holness and the Integrity Commission continues. The first court hearing in the matter took place in Chambers on Thursday between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. Prime Minister Holness is seeking permission to apply for judicial review of a report issued by the commission's director of investigation kevin stevenson so you know so we still have to keep focus my wisdom warriors today is the second day which they, they you know where them go give them oral submission talk basically and try to convince the judge yeah because that obviously that them do all right so when it come out in the paper, definitely me go update you guys because me want really find out how this go. Because me know the judge could not mad. The judge can't mad my wisdom warriors and give Andrew Wallness what he want because this is not only about Andrew Wallness. You understand me? Anyway, my wisdom warriors, take a look at this. We know that there is a generation of Jamaicans who were not born in the 1970s and they have no clue as to how the other party destroyed Jamaica. They have no clue. There is a generation born in the 90s and the early 2000s. They have no clue as to how the 18 and a half years of the PNP destroyed Jamaica. Ooh, interesting statement, Prime Minister. Let's look at some of the destruction you said the PNP caused, and let's see if Jamaica would be better off without it. The Rural Agricultural Development Authority, RADA 1990, committed to promoting the development of agriculture in Jamaica to enhance the national economy and improve the quality of life of rural farm families. Mm, that's gone! The Office of the Utilities Regulation, OUR, 1997, was established to regulate the operations of utility companies in Jamaica. That's gone too! The Jamaica Urban Transit Company, 1998, revolutionized the public transport service within the Kingston Metropolitan Transport Region, Spanish Town, and Portmore. There goes a main part of Jamaica's transport system. But wait, what about Jamaica's first state of the art transport hub for the corporate area, the Halfway Tree Transport Center? that opened in 2008? Are you seeing a trend here? The regulation of the telecoms industry. In 1999, there was only 5% mobile phone subscribers totaling 120,000 people. This change broke the monopoly, brought new players to the market, introduced prepaid service, Low prices for handsets and by 2007, there was 100% penetration. That would be simply no more. The Highway 2000 was initialized to connect to Jamaica via a comprehensive highway system, upgrade Jamaica's infrastructure, provide economic opportunities for growth, and create jobs. For the hundreds of thousands of Jamaicans that rely on these highways, can you imagine life without them? The PATH program, 2001, 
allocated through the Ministry of Labor and Social Security, the Program of Advance Through Health and Education Path is a conditional cash transfer CCT program aimed at delivering benefits to the most needy and vulnerable in society. Say goodbye to that as well. The National Environment and Planning Agency, NEPA, 2001. That was created to promote sustainable development by ensuring protection of the environment and orderly development in Jamaica. Without it, our watersheds, mangroves, and areas like our cockpit country would all be without protection. <gasps> That's gone too! The Emancipation Park, 2002. This lush seven-acre landscape was created to be a reminder of Jamaica's emancipation, freedom from bondage, and a reminder to excel, a green space in the city that, <gasps> yep, you guessed it, you have to say goodbye to this beautiful oasis. The National Health Fund, 2003. This fund helps improve patient experiences, prescription services, and access to medicine in Jamaica, as well as inpatient and outpatient pharmacy services for the public health sector, infrastructure development, and much more. You guessed it, that would be gone as well. Without the major upgrades to Sabina Park in 2005 and the creation of the Trelawney Multipurpose Stadium in 2007 and the Montego Bay Sports Complex, otherwise known as the Catherine Hall Sports Complex, in 2010. Tourism Enhancement Fund 2005 that was established to lead tourism innovation in the areas of infrastructural and sustainable projects, human capital development, and tourism linkages. <gasps> Gone with the wind! While we're on the topic of tourism, say adios to all the fancy Spanish hotels that bring in so many of our tourists and provide jobs. Thanks to the Master Plan for Sustainable Tourism Development in 2002. And the Falmouth Cruise Shipping Pair that began development in 2009 and brought a record number of tourists to Jamaica. Say so later to that as well. Let it not be forgotten that in those 18 years, education was a major priority. As a result, 64 schools were built and refurbished, including 17 new basic, primary, and high schools in Western Jamaica between 2004 and 2005, as well as Greater Portmore High School in 1995, Ascot 1997, and Cumberland 2000. Disappear. <gasps> now I don't know about you, but it looks like the PNP spent 18 years laying a good foundation that Jamaica, including the current government, is benefiting from. By the way, if you're watching this using a community hotspot or broadband, you can thank the PNP and the establishment of the Universal Access Fund that later developed into the Universal Service Fund, which provides free community Wi-Fi and hotspots island-wide. Oh no, that means you would have to say goodbye to this too. My wisdom warriors, you know, tell me what you know, think about this. Put on an honest opinion in the comment section. Like up the video, share it out and subscribe to my channel. And if you're new to my channel, welcome my people. I want to you know, run over to my other channel. It is called PNP News Round. Subscribe and get me to 5K. Also, you can follow me on TikTok. The link them are going to be in the comment section. My people, if you want to join the WhatsApp group, all you have to do is text YES to 876 Two three six nine zero nine seven. Thanks for supporting my channel, guys. It means the world to me. Blessings upon blessings. One love.